Hey, it's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to install and use the Google Analyticator plugin to add Google Analytics to your WordPress site. It's quick and easy, let's get it done. So we're in the dashboard right now. I'm gonna hover over plugins, then click on add new. I'm gonna type in Google Analyticator. And it's this one on the top left up here. There are a lot of other Google Analytics plugins. If you wanna try some others, go for it. But this is the one I always use and it's never failed me. So I'm gonna use it in this demo. I'm gonna click on the Install Now link. Then I'm gonna click on Activate. And now it's installed, ready to go. It's added a new menu item at the bottom, the bottom left down here. So we hover over that, then click on Google Analytics. And currently our integration is disabled because we haven't actually integrated the plugin yet. I've been greeted with our basic settings dashboard. You may see something else. You may see that it wants to authenticate um, automatically by uh, just clicking a button or clicking a link and then you'll log into your analytics account and it'll authenticate automatically. And there's a link below that that says, I wanna do it manually, I don't wanna do it automatically. So you can choose whichever one you want. If you wanna do it manually, you'll come to this screen and you then have to choose enable to enable it clearly. And you wanna put your UA code in here. And if you don't know where that is, I'm gonna show you right now. So head over to Google Analytics. And if you look at any of these web properties that you have, if you have more than one, you might have just one. In brackets after the property name, it actually has the UA code. UA dash followed by a bunch of characters. So we can just highlight that and copy it. Then go back to our plugin, highlight all of this, and then paste over our UA code, whatever UA, your UA code is. Uh, you can hide this after saving, uh, which, isn't really that important, doesn't really matter because people can see it on the source code of your website anyway. So I don't really know why that's necessary. Choose the universal analytics, it's the default that loads asynchronously so your site loads faster, which is awesome. Let me click on save changes right here after we've set those couple changes. And now Google is tracking. We're tracking traffic on the site now, which is fantastic. And you also down below have a bunch of other options. The defaults are great that they have set here but some of them I do like to go in and change if they're not set how I want them to. So usually for track all logged in users, I usually select no, because the logged in users are usually for my sites, they are people who are working on the site. So I don't want uh, to track their activity because that's not really user traffic. So I want to exclude that activity. User roles not to track. So I definitely don't want to track the admins because that's people like me. I'm not a user of the site, so I don't really care where I'm going on the website. I usually select all of these because none of these are actual visitors to my site. Very few of my sites have any kind of role where people can subscribe and log in. So I check all of them and then that will not track their activity in my analytics data, which is great. For the method to prevent tracking, I usually choose remove, keep the default. Remarketing, I go, I usually use yes because I like the remarketing data. If you're not sure how to do that, I mean, just select yes, it's easy enough. But if it doesn't work, then you'll have to use this checklist that they link to, very handy, it's easy to do. And then you'll be able to get that retargeting data. And then tracking the, the WordPress login page, I usually don't, but you can if you want to. And then all the rest I just keep as default, outbound link tracking, event tracking. These descriptions are very clear as to what they're talking about. So just read the descriptions and use that event or that, that option if you want to. I'm not going to waste your time by reading through every one of them because I know you can read. So I leave that to you. And those couple changes I did made make, I'm going to just save this. And now the, uh, the site is ready to go. And if you scroll down to the very bottom and show a big red box down there, you've not authenticated with Google. You cannot use the dashboard widgets. What that means is the method of authentication. So if you do the manual method, this is gonna be on here. And I don't even want to use the dashboard widgets. I prefer to see my data in Google Analytics. And if you've gone through this process already, the manual way, but you want that dashboard widget, you just click on deauthorize and reset right here. I'm gonna click on that right now. And now we go back to the screen that I skipped past earlier. So the first option is click here to get a code to authenticate. You put the code in here, click on save and continue. And this will log you in to Google Analytics if you wanna do it that way. The method I chose earlier was continue without authentication and then it brought us to that page where we were. So if you want the dashboard widgets, again, use this first, the first option. 
If you don't need the dashboard widgets, use the second option. And that's all there is to Google Analyticator. It's pretty cool because I like to filter out specific user roles from the Google data to keep my data cleaner. And that's one of the main reasons I use Google Analyticator because other plugins don't do that as well. And some don't even do that at all. So I hope this video helps you. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Please make sure you like this video, share on social media, subscribe to YouTube channel, and check out wplearninglab.com where we publish more tutorials like this every single day. Talk to you soon.